This should not have been a good video game. It really should have been hot garbage. It's a prequel that released one year after the launch of a successful new IP. The main character from the first game isn't even in it. Launched as a Nintendo Wii exclusive. That's right, they released their new IP on the shovelware console capital of the early 2000s. Mature only rated game on a console known for family friendly titles. And it did not do well commercially. It only sold like 9,000 copies. It's an on rails first person shooter. Giant risk and motion control only gameplay. Just due to the nature of how you dispatch necromorphs alone, would it be precise enough? Would it be fun to do throughout an entire game? The optics from the outside looking in are not great for extraction, but I played the game and I really liked it. This is completion number six of the Potato Backlog Project. Stick around to the end of the video for the Tater Raider and let's get into it. So why does this game work? Why isn't it the big pile of cheese we know it should be? Story, setting, characters, pacing. I started the game not really knowing what to expect, kind of just preparing for the worst. Almost immediately though, I was invested in what was happening. They start you out as part of the extraction team, getting the marker ready for transportation, taking it off the planet that was cracked. Where you are, the marker, the entire settings, all very familiar from near the end of the first game. An extremely smart way to start things off. I recognized where I was, I knew the situation, I knew what the marker could do. So even with the drastic changes from the way the first game played, you're you're brought in nice and smooth and it, and it feels okay. And until typical dead space fashion, it doesn't take long before you're blasting away necromorph limbs, questioning your sanity, and waiting on the edge of your seat for what's gonna happen next. The motion controls themselves feel a lot tighter than I thought they would. Aiming felt really accurate. I never got frustrated with what was happening on the screen and always felt like I was being treated fairly by the game and the controls. It was fun to get spooked and, and just freak out and start panicking and blasting everything in sight. I didn't however like the method of alt fire controls with the Wiimote. You had to turn the Wiimote on its side in an overly dramatic kind of pose and I would have preferred a, a button toggle or something in place of this. Mostly because I felt like I had to re-aim after really quickly in some situations so I found switching to not really be all that efficient. There's a melee mechanic that you flick the nunchuck controller to push away enemies or get rid of stuff in front of you. I found this mostly a throwaway mechanic I didn't really have to use only when I needed to do it to proceed. Maybe a missed opportunity there for a little bit more in-depth control even in an on-rail shooter style game. The perfect reload mechanic is something I did enjoy. Think of Gears of War when you gotta time your button press correctly for your reload and you instantly have bullets in the chamber and you can keep just blasting. I found this helped out a lot more in the late game encounters and it was fun getting good at it. And if you miss the timing, of course, you can't shoot for a little while and, and they just start scratching your face up and it's crazy. The controls and actual gameplay were all fine for me. Nothing game changing or innovative there, all pretty safe decisions, but nothing that really hurt the game or took away from the core experience. Dead Space Extraction was eventually ported to PlayStation 3 a couple years later, where they give you an option to use a controller if motion controls are just a total deal breaker for you. So there is that option. There's also an option for a second player to jump in and out and join you while you're playing. I feel like they designed a couple of the sequences around it, the little mini games to get past certain doors and stuff. The Necromorphs are still coming at you at the same time so a second player in those situations would have helped me out a lot as it gets a little dicey back and forth but it was fun and pretty intense any couch co-op gaming opportunities are a big plus for me in any game that all being said the real strength in the game for me is the setting of the story and the characters the pacing of the game here is phenomenal it's well thought out. The developers craft moments and situations that recreate the same feelings that you got from the first game. The timings and placement of the jump scares, the anticipation buildups, eerie, worrisome moments, emotional payoffs when they make sense. They somehow make you feel like you're playing the first game, even though you're not even running around. It's hard to explain, but it definitely feels like a Dead Space game. Even though Isaac isn't present, the game runs you through the narrative through multiple different characters' points of view. I think there's four in total. And I wasn't sure how this was going to play out or if I would like it when I realized what was happening. But as with the excellent pacing, the story progression made it feel natural. Switching between these characters made sense. And it also made the end of the game pretty cool. There's a nice little dead spacey moment at the end of the game that makes sense with what has come before it. You get a ton of callbacks and links to the original game within the world that you're in, including an ending that runs you right up to the beginning of the first game, which is great and makes sense since this is a prequel and it all just adds up and comes together in an exceptional little package and great dead space experience this one's just played a little bit differently 
three happy potato faces out of five on the tater raider scale this is a good game it's a good experience i would have went a little higher here if there had been some better boss battle sequences they're not very memorable and i felt like those could have been a lot better and there were some performance issues in the more intense situations at times keeping in mind this is running on wii and they're trying to do a lot i spoke to a friend of mine who played the playstation 3 version and he said it's absent in that version so if you were going to go looking for this game to play that would be the one that i would look for a great little diamond in the rough game and a good reminder to not always judge things by their cover to me this game had no business being as good as it was and i came away with just a great experience there's a little bit of replay value there there's a six part unlockable comic in there as well going a little bit deeper into the lore and if you're a dead space fan and have the opportunity to play it i recommend finding it and giving it a go thanks for watching friends the backlog project rolls on be kind to yourselves and other people that deserve your kindness we're on to the next one Stasis and Kinesis return with 10 weapons that have alt fire mode that makes you look like a Hollywood gangster in some kind of crazy over the top movie shooting sequences. <laughs> Talking about tilting your gun to the side ready to smoke fool necromorphs. We'll cut that. Future editing Jimmy, cut that.